Hello everyone and welcome to Poser's Movie Recap. Our story today is about a disturbed young woman who gets institutionalized in a psychiatric hospital, as she claims that she's being haunted by a mysterious and deadly zombie-like ghost. When the danger creeps closer, she comes to realize that this ghost might be darker than anything she ever could have imagined. In 1966, at the North Bend Psychiatric Hospital in rural Oregon, some footsteps are heard in the hospital's hallway where it moves into a particular room. The door label says Tammy, and the young woman inside is extremely terrified of the unseen entity at her door. As the creature enters the room, Tammy screams while the shadow of the assailant is seen choking the girl until her last breath. Sometime later, a police car is in pursuit of a young woman named Kristen who has been hiding in the woods. She manages to evade her pursuers and head to an abandoned farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. She takes out a matchbox to light the curtains from outside, and watch as the house burns into cinders. When the police arrive, they apprehend the troubled girl and bring her straight to psychiatric hospital, which is the same asylum where Tammy lose her life in the beginning. Inside, the nurse process her admittance, stripped her clothes to record all her bruises, and takes her personal information for their files. After taking a shower, an attendant named Roy leads her to the ward with a restricted access sign, where another nurse named Lunt receives her. The nurse explains the rules of the ward and brings her to a room, which Tammy previously occupied. As she falls asleep, Kristen dreams of a young girl chained up in a dark room, then it switches to the burning farmhouse from earlier. Unknown to her, a mysterious entity dragged her blanket under the bed. When she wakes up, she starts looking for her blanket and finds it under the bed, together with some letter beads that don't make much sense to her. The next day, a man enters her room and finds her sleeping on the floor. He wakes her up and introduces himself as Dr. Stringer, the one who will be taking care of her treatment while inside the facility. When the nurse enters, Kristen asks them who's been in her room last night, but Lunt answers that her door was locked. Lunt then hands her some pills, but she refused to take them and tosses them on the floor and crashes it with her feet. Stringer dismisses the nurse and tells Kristen that she can leave her room to meet the other residents. In the common room, all the other patients' attention turn to Kristen, and among them is Zoe, who seems to act like a little kid. Next is Emily, the first who approaches the new girl and asks if she's there to save them. Iris interrupts them and introduces herself, she seems to be prim and proper, and the artistically inclined member of the group. Another girl named Sarah approaches them, and quickly makes herself known as the mean girl among the residents. Not long after, an attendant calls for Kristen who leads her to Stringer's office for an interview. The doctor asks her what she remembers about yesterday, and Kristen just says fire. He then asks her what happened before that, but the young woman shows confusion and says that she doesn't remember. Stringer demands to know her reason for burning the farmhouse, but she still can't recall anything beyond the fire, even the farmhouse address written on her palm. When the doctor insists that she should try to remember the recent events, Kristen feels more confused and it clearly stressed her out. She asks the doctor to just let her go, and refuse the help that Dr. Stringer has been giving her. She then points out the one-way mirror in the corner, and when the doctor turns to look, she discreetly takes the letter opener from his desk. Back in her room, Roy gives her medication and Kristen pretends to swallow it in front of the attendant. After Roy leaves, she takes it out of her mouth and hides it under her bed mattress. She then waits a while until everything quiets down outside, and takes out the letter opener to pick the door's lock. Afterward, she goes out to the hallway to try to escape, but Roy catches her and takes her back to her room. Later, while she's dreaming of the chained girl again, she wakes when she hears a footstep from the hallway, and briefly sees a disfigured woman from the window but it quickly disappears. The next day, Iris approaches Kristen and asks if she can draw her. She agrees and while Iris prepares what she needs, Kristen sees a couple watching them from the window and asks her new friends who they are. Emily who just joined the pair tells her that they are the sad people, who always watch them looking sad. Iris adds that Stringer is a great doctor, who apparently uses an experimental treatment on his patients. When Kristen tells them about the figure she saw last night, she didn't get a clear answer from them. As the night comes, everyone starts dancing when Sarah puts on music while Kristen watches them. The fun is interrupted by a thunderstorm and power going out. Suddenly, a ghost-like figure appears when the light flickers, making everyone get scared of the dark especially Zoe. Later, while Kristen is left alone in the shower, a disfigured figure attacks her and she screams. Lunt quickly comes to her rescue, but when she tells her about it, they give her a heavy sedative and take her to the therapy room. Stringer asks her to bite a piece of cloth, and performs an intense electroshock therapy that feels like it's been frying her brains. Afterward, the attendant carries the now docile girl back into her room. In the morning, Emily wakes Kristen up and they all eat their breakfast except for Kristen. Later, the girls gather for group therapy with Stringer, 
and Emily looking like the Joker asks what they did to Kristen. But Stringer just lies and tells her that they had an unscheduled therapy last night. Emily expresses her concern that it looks similar to Tammy, because unscheduled therapy leads people to never come back like Tammy. When Kristen asks who Tammy is, Iris answers that Tammy was the last one who left the ward, unaware of the girl's true fate. Before she can further elaborate, Stringer interrupts their conversation and urges them to discuss what happened in the shower. Sometime later, Emily approaches Kristen to cheer her up, but gets interrupted by Iris's announcement of her upcoming final session with Stringer. She thinks that she'll be released afterward, even though Stringer didn't explicitly say it. During her session, Stringer looks at her latest drawings that include a dark figure in a hallway. Iris's hope crashes down when the doctor tells her that she won't be getting out today, and reveals a metronome device. He then instructs Iris to focus on the rhythm and relax, and when the girl seems to get hypnotized by the rhythmic sound, he asks her to imagine her home, and Iris eventually falls asleep. After the session, Stringer asks the attendant to fetch the sleeping girl in his office, but when the attendant looks inside the room, Iris is missing. Meanwhile, Iris wakes up restrained to a stretcher while the disfigured woman takes the screaming girl to the therapy room. The figure removes her glasses and without a warning, stabs her in the eye causing her demise. In the common room, Kristen wakes up worried about Iris and when she asks Lunt about her, the nurse just ignores her question. The next day, Iris is still missing at breakfast and Emily believes that she's been released while Sarah thinks not. Kristen goes to Iris's room and finds it empty except for her drawing book, which she believes Iris will not leave behind. As she inquires about Iris's whereabouts, the nurse just ignores her again. She then goes back to her room and looks at Iris's sketches. She sees a drawing of a woman named Alice, and on the next page, she finds a sketch of the disfigured woman who choked her. At the upper corner of the paper, the name Alice Hudson is written on it. She then remembers the letter beads that she found on her first night, and realizes that they actually spell out Alice's name. At her next therapy session, Kristen asks Stringer about Alice, but the doctor diverts her questions. She then asks where is Tammy, Iris, and the other girls that were treated before her, but she never gets a clear answer from him. Back in the common room, she asks the girls who Alice is, but they stay silent with their faces riddled with guilt. When Sarah calls her a loony, Kristen slaps her and tells her to never call her that. Finally, Emily answers and tells Kristen that Alice was a patient who got released. Kristen then announces her plan to escape, but Zoe tells her that someone won't let her leave the facility. Later, Kristen takes some toilet paper and shoves it at Emily's door, so it can be opened from outside. In her room, Lunt gives Kristen her pills and the girl pretends to take them. After the nurse leaves, she hides her pills inside the pillowcase and pretends to sleep. After Roy's last round, she and Emily make their way to the bathroom and remove a screw from the vent using Zoe's penny. The two crawl to the vent and after a while, they find themselves in another part of the hospital. At the same moment, Lunt finds that the girl's room is open and quickly looks for them to no avail. The two young women go down to the basement floor and reach the morgue, where Emily takes some scalpel. When they hear some footsteps, Emily quickly hides under the table while Kristen enters a dark closet. Unknown to her, a hand is trying to reach her back inside the closet. When the coast is clear, Kristen walks out of her hiding place and calls Emily's name, but the woman is nowhere to be found. Suddenly, a drawer begins rattling, so Kristen nervously opens it to investigate. A disfigured hand appears and startles her, causing Kristen to run out of the morgue. She goes back upstairs and when she's about to open the front door, she hears someone calling Alice's name. She turns to look, but when she turns back, Kristen is terrified to see Alice's ghost before her. Startled, she falls to the ground and hit her head, causing her to lose consciousness. The next morning, Kristen wakes in her room still disoriented. Emily shows up and tells her that she was caught last night by the orderlies and they hurt her arm. Kristen tells her that she thinks Iris is gone for good, so they have to find a way to escape or else, they'll suffer the same fate as Iris. In the common room, Sarah demands an explanation about what happened last night, as they can get them all in trouble for what she did. After riling up Emily, Sarah leaves feeling proud of herself and looks at her pocket mirror. She gets startled when she sees Alice's ghost in the reflection, so she quickly runs and hides in a room. As she looks at the door window, Alice grabs her face from behind and constricts Sarah's breathing until she passes out. Sarah wakes up restrained in an operating chair, while the disfigured Alice prepares the electrotherapy machine. Sarah pleads for her life but the ghost feels no remorse, and set the shock therapy to maximum voltage until Sarah's face swell and her brain fries. When lights flicker in the common area due to the power overload, Kristen realizes that Sarah is missing, so she rushes to her room and finds her mattress folded up. Zoe throws a tantrum and drops her stuffed toy, and when Kristen tries to comfort the girl, she sees Alice's initial written on her toy. 
She asks Zoe if the toy belongs to Alice, and Zoe reveals that Sarah and the other girls did something to Alice, because she often hurt them all the time. Finally, Emily and Zoe tell her what really happened to Alice. It was Tammy's idea to get rid of the girl, and Zoe lead her to Tammy's room while everyone is waiting to gang up on her. They suffocate her with a pillow until her last breath, and now she's back for revenge. Kristen is confused why Alice is after her as well, as she had nothing to do with her demise. Emily tells her that it doesn't matter as they are all dead, then runs away to the bathroom. The two find her holding a scalpel ready to end herself as she thinks that they are all doomed. But before she does, Alice's ghost appears behind Emily and slashes her throat. Zoe screams and becomes hysterical at the sight of her friend bleeding out. In her desperate mind, Kristen hatches a plan to escape by holding Zoe as a pretend hostage. Initially, the plan works as the nurse lets them pass, but the attempt is thwarted by Roy when the man is able to disarm her and pin her to the wall. Lunt quickly prepares to sedate Kristen, but Stringer stops her as he still believes he can cure the young woman. When Kristen bites Roy's arm and tries to break free, they have no choice but to inject her with the sedatives that Lunt prepares. In a straight jacket, Kristen is forced to take her pills and after the nurse leaves, she uses the spring from her bed frame to cut the ties on her jacket. She then forces herself to expel the pill that she swallowed earlier, and waits for Lunt's nightly round while hiding behind the door. When the nurse enters her room, she knocked her out and get her keys. She then ambushes Roy and knocks him out too, then proceeds to get Zoe and run through the hallways. As they reach the ground floor, Alice's ghost appears to stop them, so the pair runs through the stairs into the basement. They find a dumbwaiter and Kristen tells Zoe to get in, but Alice's ghost appears behind Zoe and finish her off. A moment later, Kristen is able to climb the dumbwaiter before the attendant can capture her, and reach another room on the ground floor. She looks for Zoe but she's nowhere to be found, except for a trail of blood that leads her straight to Alice. She rushes out and enters another room, but the ghost follows her and throws her around. She manages to get a fire axe and strangely, when she buries the axe on Alice's chest, the disfigured ghost falls and bleeds out. It's very strange for a ghost indeed. Kristen finds her way back to Stringer's office and sees Alice's patient file, which details her treatments and each one of the girl's names, including Kristen herself. Suddenly, Stringer appears behind her and asks what she's doing, but Kristen grabs a glass shard and forces the doctor to tell her the truth. The man reveals the real twist that extremely surprises Kristen, which according to the doctor, she is one of many split personalities of the real Alice Hudson, meaning Kristen is actually Alice. He adds that Alice was kidnapped as a young child and abused by an unknown assailant eight years ago. Alice was left chained up for two months in the basement of the same farmhouse Kristen had burned down, and in order to survive the trauma, her mind began to suffer from multiple personality disorders, creating each one of the girls from the ward as a different personality. Over time, Alice's own personality became so overwhelmed by that of the others that she lost herself. Dr. Stringer attempted experimental techniques to bring Alice's own personality back to reality, resulting in the manifestation of a ghost entity that was finishing off all the other girls. He explains that her treatments were working until Kristen appeared, yet another invention of Alice's mind to protect itself from reliving the trauma back at the farmhouse. After this revelation, Alice's ghost appears and throws herself and Kristen out of the window, causing the real Alice to reawaken. Alice's parents, whom she had seen earlier in Dr. Stringer's office as the sad people, have come to take her home because she is finally fully treated. Roy hands her belonging including Zoe's stuffed animal, Iris's sketch pad, and the bead letter bracelet that the attendant has put back together. Later, after gathering the rest of her stuff, Alice takes one last look around her room. Upon opening her medicine cabinet, Kristen suddenly comes out and attacks her. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. You can also hit the notification bell and like the video to help the channel out, thank you.